Hey guys, I totally failed at a digital detox this week and this video is going to be about what happened and how you can do it better than I did. <laughs> I'm Susan Chan, certified feng shui consultant coming to you from Paris and today I'm having a chill day. I've got my, oh can you see it, my favorite mug, my cup of hibiscus tea. It's a gray and cloudy Day in Paris, it's actually raining, so I'm chill. I'm sitting here in my dad's sweater that he gave me, and it's so cozy and very comforting because I miss home and I miss him sometimes. So here I am. Today I'm going to talk to you about my supposedly digital detox last week, um, and I didn't do that great. And I want to tell you guys my week, how it went. So as you know, last week I decided to do a digital detox because beginning of the year is super busy for me and it's not only January 1st where everyone's prepping for it after the holidays, but also it's the Lunar New Year. And as you know, I gave you guys some tips and made some videos and hopefully you did all of that, but man, it was tiring. So by the end of it, I definitely knew that I was burning out and I wanted to give myself the gift of just chilling out. And I'm in Paris, beautiful city. Uh, have not really done anything since I've been here. A lot of people talk to me about Emily in Paris, which I haven't really watched, but I thought I could be Susan in Paris, why not? <laughs> so that was my goal. It didn't work out exactly like that. I mean, the good thing was the weather was gorgeous. I got really lucky. Usually here, well, I mean, how it's been, I can't say usually because I just moved here, but it's been about anywhere between 30 and 40 degrees. Last week, high 50s, low 60s actually i shouldn't say last week because this is sunday um but it was gorgeous out gorgeous 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 and paris is a gorgeous city to walk around in when the weather's so nice so i believe i scored but i'm gonna tell you something um it was really 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 hard to relax i know that i'm a workaholic but uh i didn't really know to what extent i mean i gave myself a whole week in my one of my i'm not gonna say my favorite because i love new york still uh one of my favorite cities in the world and i couldn't relax can you believe it but here are some things that i succeeded at doing this week so one was i actually got to sleep in late i usually set my alarm actually i don't set my alarm because since I moved to Paris, I realized how thin the walls are in these old buildings. Um, it's a walk-up, so I live in a walk-up building that is probably at least, gosh, I want to say about 150 years old. So I had to get used to that. I Every morning, I hear my neighbor blow his nose. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So when I started setting my alarm here, I realized that everyone in the building could hear it. So what I did is I started... My Fitbit here has the option to vibrate the alarm. So I've been setting that instead of my alarm clock. You're welcome, neighbors. So this week, I actually didn't I turned that off completely. So I let myself get up whatever time I wanted. And that was really nice. The other thing that was really great is that I spent most of the week solo. That was so cool because even though I'm a planner, so I made a plan of the things that I wanted to do this week. And if I canceled or didn't do any of them, nobody got mad at me. <laughs> it was awesome. So that was another great thing. And the other thing that was really great was I didn't have to plan when I was going to wash my hair. I know that sounds really weird, but since I've moved to Paris, the whole hair thing has been such an issue because the water here is so hard compared to New York, which means that it gets greasy, it gets weird. So yeah, it's a, it's a whole other story. So because I wasn't making videos or I wasn't going to be in the videos, I didn't have to wash my hair. And that was a vacation in itself. I'm not kidding. So let me actually talk to you about the things that didn't go so well. I did mention that the weather was really nice this past week, but because of that, I kind of felt under pressure to be outside all the time. And, you know, it's a walking city, but being outside all the time made me really tired. I mean, I'm not 20 anymore, so walking around for eight hours um, got me tired. So uh, it wasn't as relaxing as I thought it would be walking around the city. The other thing that I forgot about was the how kind of like twisty and turny Paris is, meaning that, so if you don't know, Paris is set up uh, in a circle. It goes from the center, which is like the first, and it spirals out to the 20, 20 arrondissements, and so you don't really know which direction you're ever walking in. And I'm gonna tell you, when I lived here in the 90s, uh, you had to walk around with one of these things. It's, um, it's called, I don't know if you can see it, it's called the Plan de Paris. And inside of this guy, you've got, you have, like, look how thick it is. 
<laughs> first of all, and having post-it notes of like how to get places because if somebody gave you an address back in the day, you would have to honestly like look up the street. There's like an alphabet here and then you would go to that page and then after you would find the name of the street. So you would look up the name of the street. Oh, and it would give you like the number. So it tells you the coordinates. And so you'd have to go to the coordinates on the page, find it. I kid you not. So we were always walking around with this book, walking around Paris. And I think that's why I didn't walk around as much as I do now. So that was a trap for me because anytime that I need to get around Paris, if I don't know the area and I was trying to explore new neighborhoods this week, I had to pull out my phone because of the GPS because it's so much easier. So that was like a strike against me because I had to take out my phone. And once my phone is out, I call it my dumb phone, I start to get distracted and move on to other things. So that was another thing that didn't go so well. All right, so another thing that I really wanted to do this week because I've always been so busy that I never gave myself the time to read a book. So when I was in New York, I joined Audible, which was great because I could read while I was doing things like eating breakfast or brushing my teeth or washing the dishes. But as you know, Audible has to be on a gadget. So once again, you know, if I wanted to listen to Audible, I had to be on my phone. So I decided to start reading paper books again. And I have a friend, she's Vero, she's so sweet, so, so sweet. She knew I was taking this week off and she went to a bookstore with me, saw that I love this book. I think I shared it with you guys and she surprised me with it. So it was really fabulous. I was excited to start this book. It's in French and I've been wanting to uh, improve my French grammar, my written French, my, how I read, because I can speak, but I can't really write that well. So I wanted to start with this book, but of course it's hard. <laughs> I mean, it's such a good book, but I probably had to look up every, there was probably, I don't know. I mean, it's a small format, but every page, I probably had to look up like 20 words. And how did I do that? I don't have a dictionary. Dictionary's on my phone. So I had to go to my phone. So let's just say in a week, I read about, so these are blank pages. I read like nine pages. So in a week I read nine pages. So that was very slow going. I imagined myself sitting in a bunch of cafes because Paris is all about cafe culture. You sit outside or you sit inside in these like really cute small tables. Sometimes people are smoking outside or they're just drinking their coffee and I wanted to be one of them. So I did that. I would get either a decaf because I cannot drink like five coffees a day that like they do. So I would get my coffee and sit outside, people watch. Paris is so fantastic to people watch. But then I'd get bored after a while. I know it's kind of nuts. So my mind started racing and started thinking about, well, what are the things that you could be doing right now that would be fun? And guess what? I started watching YouTube videos. <laughs> Not kidding tutorials about how I can make my videos better, looking things up. So I was sitting at cafes and I was watching YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, not exactly a digital detox, but at least I spent the first part of my cafe time watching people. So that was, that was good. <laughs> Let's see. What else did I do this week? Oh, I went to, um, I walked around a lot, like I said, and I went to a couple of uh, museums. One was Art, uh, Musée Art et Décoratif, which is really beautiful. And the other one was Serge Gainsbourg Museum, uh, the Gainsbourg Museum, which is one of the reasons why I came here. And it's a whole backstory. I'm not even going to get into it right now. But I went to those museums and it was really fantastic. Now, the only thing is I wanted to document it. I wanted to take pictures for myself, for you guys. I wanted to take B-roll. I don't know if you know what B-roll is. It's something, you know, it's this when I'm doing things and want to show you guys. Um, so what did I have to do? Because I don't have a camera. It's only on my phone. So I took out my phone. And once I was on my phone, I, sometimes I would put it on airplane mode. But once I was on my phone, it was, yeah, after that, it was, no, no good. <laughs> so again, phone one. Now let's get talking about my glasses. So I guiltfully, what's the word? Guiltily, guilt, something like that. So with guilt, I buy reading glasses because I lose them all the time. I buy reading glasses that are really inexpensive and it's my fault. They're cheap, so they break. And this week, of course, it happened this week where all of them broke. So I could not see anything. <laughs> I couldn't read. I couldn't look at any maps. 
nothing. I couldn't look at any menus uh, unless I wanted to put them on and have them lopsided, which not a good look in Paris. So I was on a hunt for reading glasses and I was walking down the street one day and I saw the sign outside of a store that said lunettes pour tout, which it means glasses for everybody. And I was like, oh, that's me. I'm everyone and I need glasses. And then they had this sign that said um, in and out in like 10 minutes or something. Even more perfect because, you know, I got a, a week of relaxing to do. And of course, I wanted to look at the reviews because I wanted to know what people thought about the place. So out comes my phone and I'm looking at the reviews. I'm reading the reviews and they're pretty great. So I go in and uh, I talk to the guy, super nice, ask me all these questions. I asked him a bunch of questions. They have all their um, glasses like laid out in sections. You can try them on. It's, it's really a fantastic, fun experience. And in the store as well, which is really cool, is that it's pretty big. So they have these, I don't know what you call it. It's like Willy Wonka. They have like these, these air canals that they shoot the product back and forth from like left to right. So it, it's so cool. I actually ended up buying a couple of pairs of glasses because of course they had a deal that was buy one, get the second one free. So I think you guys saw this. I had to share, of course, let me clean them. Um, I share them, I think in an Instagram post, but I wanted something that was me and original. So what do you guys think? <laughs> I love them. I love them because I can really read well. Um, I mean, if I could understand all these words, but I read really well, I see really well, and um, I don't know, I've been told they look good too, so that was a win. Even though I had to look up the store on my phone, still a win. Okay. Oh, this is something that I did on Friday that was the highlight of my week. Uh, this I definitely couldn't use my phone inside because it was a hammam. And uh, if you don't know what a hammam is, this is my first time in a hammam, but in Paris, because they have a lot of uh, Muslim influence, they have these hammams. And they are these beautiful like spa like places that I well, this one was women only and it was sauna, steam room, you can get massages, things like that. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to relax this week, I definitely have to try that. So I went to the hammam and had no idea what to expect. There was a guy at the counter, which surprised me because it's women only, but he, you know, sold me a, a small package, which was basically an all day. You go in, you can use the sauna, the steam room. Uh, what else do they have? They had like a, a pool. Um, and I decided to get what's called a gommage and like, um, they use like this, this really gritty sponge and basically take off like a layer of your skin, but it felt really good. Now, um, this is the story I want to tell you. So we start off in the waiting area where they give you hot mint tea. And there was a woman sitting there and I was watching like the intro video and she must, I must've looked lost, but came over to me and she said, is this your first time here? I said, yes. And she started telling me a little bit about the spa and she was so nice. She asked me what I did. I talked to her about feng shui. She really was interested. It was really a nice conversation. So uh, I go in ahead of her cause she was meeting her friend and she said, I'll see you in there. Great. Fantastic. So I'm in the spa area and, you know, I have my bathing suit on and um, I'm not, you know, French women are very at ease with their bodies. It's really fantastic to be around. Um, so I think you guys know that on the beaches here, they go topless. So in the hammam, it wasn't any different. Most of the women were topless and I'm fine with that. I'm totally at ease with that. So I was also topless. Now, as I was like, walking around, you're going in the steam rooms. I know it's a long story, but I'll get to the point. So I bump into the woman who I met in the reception area and she is so nice, like asking me if I tried all the things. And in a split second, I realized that we, were, we barely knew each other, we were strangers and we we're both standing there practically naked, <laughs> like topless. And I was like, this is not something I don't think that would happen in New York, but it was pretty funny. I mean, I'm sure that the next time I go to her mom, I won't have the same reaction, but, and she didn't, and it was totally cool, but I, that was really funny. That was my her mom, was my her mom experience. What are my takeaways from this week? Uh, of course, right? I'm a, I'm a coach, I have to have some takeaways. My first takeaway is that I, before I do a digital detox, I probably need to know how to do a digital detox because I didn't plan it. I just wanted to relax and said I was gonna do a digital detox, but I realized it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So before I go on my next digital detox, I'm gonna research how to do it. So I will share that with you as well. What's my second takeaway. My second takeaway is probably, I definitely still want to read more. Um, but if I want to relax, I think I need to plan on reading English books in paperback. 
because even though this is gorgeous and I will one day get through this, it was too hard for me. And I spent a lot of time just looking up words and mm, that's not very relaxing. So paper books, second takeaway. Third takeaway is um, I'm gonna plan some more indoor activities. You know, like I wanted to do watercolor or maybe just like sitting back and watching like Netflix or something. So I didn't feel like I had to run around and be so exhausted during the day. So definitely I'm gonna plan more indoor activities. Another takeaway is before my next vacation, I think that I do need to invest in a camera, <laughs> like a regular old fashioned, just takes pictures kind of gadget. Uh, because having this, you know, even though it's called a smartphone, I mean, I actually call it a dumb phone. If you know me, that's what I call it. Everything is in there. And so in order for you to really do anything in your life, take pictures, read messages, uh, record a video, look up words, have directions, you need to take out your phone. So I think that if I'm going to create content for you guys, I'm going to get a real camera so I can take pictures and do video for you. And my last takeaway, my last takeaway is that I'm going to carefully plan my next vacation because I think that being in a city is great, but I need to know that if I'm in a city, I'm probably going to need my phone. So my next vacation, I think I'm going to plan to go somewhere that is very quiet, um, maybe in the countryside or at the beach or something like that. So I don't feel like I have to document everything. And I also, oh, you know what would be really good? Somewhere that didn't have Wi-Fi, like in the mountains, no internet. And then I can really like turn off because obviously I don't have willpower on my own to do that. So uh, I think that is what I'm going to aim for next time. So in my own life, I guess I need to remember that feng shui, I mean, I teach feng shui, but feng shui is not just a luxury, but a necessity. And what that means for me is that in order for me to keep my energy up, uh, stay far away from these gadgets because it really is energy and time sucking for me. So if I'm going to do another vacation digital detox, no phone. I think I feel a uh, part two or part three necessary for this video. What do you think?